God been good to you? Yes. Has God been good to you? Yes. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to worship my king today. To my king today. Hallelujah. Join us. Clap your hands. He's worth Thank you. 
saw the angels worshiping God. And we're here today to join them, to worship his name, to praise his name. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worthy is the
sovereign God, we give you praise. Because there is none like you. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our fathers. We bow down before your throne. We declare your Lord and majesty. We give you praise. Because you're good. You are God alone. From the time began. And we give you praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can join us to sing. We want to encourage you with this song. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know that all things are working together for your good. Say it to yourself and say, all things are working together for my good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether good or bad or whatever, all things are what? Working together for my good. Amen? Amen. Joseph went through it. It ended up in praise. Hallelujah. Job went through it. It ended up in double portion. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul and Silas went to prison. It ended up in praise. Yes, Lord. For someone here today, you will go out limping and rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. All things are working together for our good.
be here we're not satisfied we could have just had that and closed the service i don't know what you came with but there is a message there for you there is a invisible hand i said there is an invincible hand that you have not seen oh god it's intentionally working for your good you might have mistaken it in the past but i pray that you have a revelation this morning that all collectively even the one that is against you is working for your good hallelujah i'm excited in the presence of the awesome god and in paraventure you have not been here since friday i said you miss a lot but i pray that god will show you mercy this morning we celebrate god in our midst it's only god that can gather us and pour his unction his presence and gather people to reveal himself so that god can you just be on your feet as we celebrate that god well just a moment amen you may not understand since we came to this sanctuary, there have never been a time, a time that God gather us here and leave us empty. It's not, it's not too much of our prayer sometimes. It's not too much of what we have been able to put in. But God does show us mercy. So this morning, wherever you are, I just want you to join me to worship this God who have been so gracious to us, have been so mindful of us, who have been so generous even in our midst. God, if you've got a thousand things that the Lord has done, marvelous, marvelous things He has done in our midst through men, He has chosen in our generation to you be praised and to you be glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to celebrate you this morning because without the, you there is no house of praise and I celebrate the God that you serve and I desire that that God will show up for you in the mighty name of Jesus I'm excited that God connected you in our, in our lives in this place to further the purpose of God in our generation I want to tell you we have not yet arrived there is still a long journey for us to accomplish. And we know one thing. We are getting to the finishing line together. It's certain. Hallelujah. I celebrate all the workers. I celebrate these able ministers and all the pastors in the house. Thank you for the support, for the unity. And each time the Lord let things in our hearts. We join our hearts together and we see the fulfillment of it. Thank you so much. And God of heaven will bless you more and more in Jesus' name. At this moment, I want to sincerely appreciate the family that God connected to us in this place. I as I always say, I don't take it lightly. I appreciate this family. I remember two years ago, they came all the way and they crossed over the service with us. I don't remember how many ministers have done that for us. So they, they are not strangers. So when you see them, when you see them any moment, any time, even on Facebook, it's so much available in Facebook now appreciate God for this life that God appreciate God for this family that God appreciate for our generation and I desire that from glory to glory they will go so without much introduction you know him 
at this point i want us to celebrate the apostle of our time the lord the one that god have used in this generation to reach out to many nations of the earth please join me as we welcome our pastor pastor pk olawale let's put our hands together to god Could you hold the hand of the person to your right and left and let's pray? First of all, can we give thanks? Just thank God for this morning. Thank God for you. Thank God for the person to your right and to your left. Just give thanks. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you just ask the Lord something on behalf of the person you're holding? To your right and to your left. Let it come from your heart. I didn't say pray for yourself. I said ask God something for the person to your right and to your left the greatest gift God can give us is his mercy can you ask God to be merciful unto your neighbor this morning Lord just be merciful to us Lord we ask for your mercy this morning merciful to us as a church be merciful to us as a people can you pray that what the person does not want will not look for the person calamities pain shame everything wrong that the person is saying lord let this never come to my household that thing will not locate this to your neighbor The mercy and the grace of God will flourish over that life. We will end the year strong. Thirty-first of December, twenty seventeen. When we take the head count, none shall be missing. Come on, none will be missing. You will go on a journey of no return. You will go in peace, return in safety. Come on, pray for your neighbor. Your seat of honor will not be allocated to another. You walk to church this morning, all through your life, till you see Jesus, they will not carry you around. Your health will not fail. Your eyes will not fail. Your body will cooperate with the word of God.
Jesus name we pray Father we receive the word of grace this morning engrave it on our hearts Lord help us never to lose it in Jesus name you may be seated sorry I saw someone in a flash now I'm looking for the person it's a lady that's you the sister in um, Ankara yes can you please carry your stuff come come sit here I'm just waiting for the next instruction the healing hand of God is coming on you this morning Ezra sit down sit down Ezra and chapter number three there's so much anointing in the house this morning whoa whoa please I I don't know why I have to say this just just been resonating in my my mind uh, since since very early this morning let's make sure we do everything in this house to keep the bond of the unity of faith don't lose the family bond you have that has been some form of a defense for us and the devil seemed to be attacking it now i had an inkling immediately i landed on on friday on thursday i couldn't articulate it but i think it just became a bit clear this morning amen do everything within your power to keep the bond of love and of unity amen ezra three we're very very brief second service will soon be up if you can i don't know how to preach the same sermon on the same day I, I i i don't know how to preach so please i'll be speaking on something different in the second service you want to wait fight i think i'll be able to minister on the second service i'm very time conscious this service all right ezra chapter number three enforcing prophecy part three then we'll do part four second service hallelujah I'll read from verse verse number 8 to verse number 13 I'd like us to read together in the chorus glory be to Jesus oh hallelujah he loves us so much oh what marvelous love Jesus loves us with unexplainable love can someone say thank you Jesus amen if you have a revelation of his love you cry every day every day it's beyond comprehension only your spirit can grasp it our intellect is too too minute to comprehend his love I'll read verse 8 you read verse 9 we'll continue in that alternate order and end at verse number 13 now in the second month of the second year of their coming to the house of god at jerusalem zerubbabel the son of shetail jeshua the son of josadak and the rest of their brethren the priests and the levites and all those who came who had come out of the captivity to jerusalem began work and appointed the levites from 20 years old and above to oversee the work of the house of God. Next verse. I pray for you when the roll call of those that God has used to build his kingdom 
is being written your name will not be found wanting Amen. when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the lord they laid the foundation the priests stood in the apparel with trumpets and the levites the sons of asaph with cymbals to praise the lord according to the ordinance of david king of israel But many of the priests and the Levites and heads of the father's houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice. When the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes, yet many shouted aloud for joy. Verse 13, the loud verse. So that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For amen this morning we're speaking on thanksgiving the key to enforcing prophecy now listen ladies and gentlemen there is a common mistake we make and that's the fact that uh, when god does something for us um sometimes we haven't prayed for maybe a year or we pray for six months god does it we thank him for six minutes well then it's a, it's a terrible thing let me explain thanksgiving praise and worship thanksgiving is a celebration of god's kindness or his goodness praise is a celebration of god's greatness or his ability and his works worship is a celebration of who he is he has nothing to do with what he has done or what he has not done he has nothing to do with what how much power in fact the truth is this a deeper revelation of worship god is a celebration of god's holiness because he alone is holy now a lot of times ladies and gentlemen we love to praise god a heart of gratitude will always make you more of a worshiper than a praiser because whenever you praise god when we thank god god does it again in other words when you come back to say lord thank you he does it again thanksgiving is very good you remember the story of the ten lepers the bible says ten were healed one came back and the one that came back to say thank you having a heart of gratitude was the only one that was made whole the difference between being healed and being made whole is being healed is the sickness stops the damage that has been done so far cannot continue from further but when you have been made whole even the part that had been damaged will get repaired so it was the only one that had 10 fingers at the end of the day 10 fingers and 10 toes complete like nothing ever happened to him others some part of it were eaten but the eating stopped that's the difference and ladies and gentlemen God is very particular about thanksgiving and it is human propensity because our needs are insatiable it's human propensity not to be thankful not to be thankful we take things for granted that you are seated down you take it for granted you know one of my one of the members of uh, one of the churches I pastored he happens to be the head of a probably the road safety corps in Nigeria and at the time there was an attempt on his life as our sins were sent to him they shot him but the lord delivered him um the bullets didn't hit his heart they went on to surgery took out the pallets and after the surgery now the day he came he came personally to tell me this he said pastor some few days after the surgery i farted and there was celebration that shows that his bowels were alive again now how little you take for granted the very little little things sometimes we forget that we are not an automated mechanism there's someone whose words make us walk 
the bible says in hebrews 1 3 he upholds everything by the word of his power there's one person who 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 makes sure the spiritual ecology of your life along with that of the society works together and is not contrary i've seen people die choking on water they were drinking before and it's so amazing and it has nothing to do with the devil ladies and gentlemen don't take for granted i know you feel emotional about it today and tomorrow is likely we'll go back to our old ways but i pray in the name of jesus christ of nazareth if there's any secret with god ladies and gentlemen it is a heart of worship and a heart of gratitude because very few people have mastered it very few people indulge in it so god does not joke with the people that do it very very little voice of thanksgiving leaves this earth to god very little very very little now there are three categories of people of believers number one those that thank god irrespective of what's going on what is happening whether things are nice or not they just understood the fact that the fact that i'm alive it simply means whatever he's doing is working for my good he's working for my good there are three realms of thanksgiving number one i call it relative thanks when you thank god be because your life is a bit better than that of somebody let me explain you are not thankful for your health until you go to the hospital that's relative thanksgiving in other words until you see someone who doesn't have well-being the way you at, at least to the extent that you do you are not grateful until you see somebody who who is married that doesn't have children you are not grateful for your children until you see someone who is not married at all you are not thankful for your husband and who is way older than you and until you <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that is a cheap realm of thanksgiving it is acceptable to god but that is not what god wants that is very childish you've not understood the purpose of your existence ladies and gentlemen if god will give you a revelation of thanksgiving your prayer time will become 80 20 80 thanksgiving 80 percent thanksgiving 20 percent the request because ladies and gentlemen for all he has done we can't be thankful enough one thing no the generations of man from adam till today will never be able to thank god enough for is the death of jesus christ of nazareth don't wait to see someone's demis hear someone's wrong testimonies or what's going on with the other person that's not going on with you before you say lord thank you the devil keeps us busy with the things that seem not to be done and he forgets he helps us forget the many things countless things that the lord has done someone said there was this young man in the church i passed one of the churches i was his pastor but i didn't like to see him i'm serious it was one one member of the, as a pastor you should be a shepherd all all sheep is your flock this one was the only sheep that will come and i will run i'm telling you the truth two minutes with this brother you will start complaining to god two minutes don't hang around with such people they will they will your destiny will be short short circuited they will bring you they will take you back 15 years hang out with people that irrespective lord thank you it could have been worse than this and the fact that you kept it to this at this point simply means all things okay, for my God. it's not an accident accidents don't happen to grateful people accident happen to folks that are filled with the spirit of ingratitude it's so amazing how we stop telling our wives thank you for making the meal because the truth is this if you do not love man that you see you cannot respond to god that you can't see if you are not grateful to the person next to you 
you can let me explain being here this weekend is way off but one thing i i shouldn't be saying this and i've never said it before one thing i've always appreciated in the ministership here let me not just mention one person's name is the fact that it's gratitude thank you that you're able to come thank you if you don't if you know how much that means to someone that travels a lot because you go to some churches and they think they're doing you a privilege allowing you come i don't go again i'm serious jesus says such places dust your foot step away it's as simple as that i don't need a place to preach ladies and gentlemen gratitude opens doors that prayers don't second category are those i call it contact thanksgiving you thank god you are not thanking god because of what he's doing in your life that he's not doing in someone else's life but you are thanking god because of what he has done for you just what he has done for you they asked the man that was blind in john 9 they said this person that healed is a sinner who cares sinner or no sinner 39 years old of blindness now i can see it won't be well with all of you <laughs> it's, <I'm serious. laughs> it's as simple as that you are telling me somebody's a sinner you, you are not in my shoe 39 years you've had your own eyes 39 years i've not had my you are not telling me he's a sinner uh, let me not talk brother be grateful finally number three which is the highest revelationary realm of thanksgiving is what i call the purposive thanksgiving or the purpose related thanksgiving you are able to thank god because you know even if it's not everything your life had gone beyond being conditioned to happenings and happenstances circumstances just not just push you you are, your life had gone beyond being tossed to and fro by the wave of the earth you know that jesus owns this life anything that happens is working my good those are the only people that paul said we are cast down We are beaten on every side. Ladies and gentlemen, be grateful. The text we read said these people, they laid the foundation. Because a lot of us and most of us, especially those of us that stand in the realm of the first and the second dimensions of Thanksgiving, will always wait for the house to be finished. Our thanksgiving is doing dedication, not foundation. Anybody, a non believer, everybody that doesn't know God will always thank God when it is finished. Only revelation will make you start celebrating. Your celebration at the foundation is much more than the celebration knowing that he who had begun a good work in you he does not start what he cannot finish one of the ways why we miss out of prophecy and promises is that we do not celebrate the promise we celebrate the performance learn to celebrate excuse me ladies and gentlemen there's a man in scripture very profound I actually told myself I won't get down from this list this morning. That's the only way I'll keep to my time. Okay, the time is right. So I'm 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 being tempted three, four times. <laughs> it is not the Holy Ghost moving me, it's me. <laughs> All right. So I'm actually it's discipline here, self-control, we call it. All right. Now there's a man in scripture, brethren. That guy wasn't born again. Centurion. 
sent for Jesus and said, Sir, please, my daughter is very, very sick. Could you come? Jesus didn't want to go. Now listen, people. Listen. Jesus did not want to go. The elders of the Jews came and met Jesus, said, This man has been nice to us. The temple, he helped us build the temple also. Why did the brethren said in the book of Acts, if anybody should die, it's not this Tabitha. She was not one of those that just sits in church. Everybody have eaten of the fruit of her hands. If you don't come to church on Sunday, would there be a vacuum? Will anybody know that you did come? That's how you know how relevant your life is to God. I don't care who you are, whether you eat with angels, we will all die or be with Jesus. This life will end in this body. Is there you now know that you've been running after the wrong things? We'll not be at the same level at that point. Though. Make your life count. Why, why did the Lord, the house of Cornelius, what did the angel tell him? In Acts of the Apostles, your arms had gotten up to God. There is a place for the service you render that affects other people's life. It's a form of thanksgiving. Say, Lord, thank you for giving me. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't give. I'm so sorry, please. I don't know why I'm talking like this this morning. That is wrong, please. It matters to God that before you die at the prime of your life you should help a life that can never say thank you to you all this one we do and we sit down and we said but for you because the person is close you trained your brother you trained your sister it's your responsibility your neighbor downstairs go and affect a life for someone that can never you will never see the person till you die now we're talking of service brother this thing goes, goes beyond speaking in tongues just living and enjoying blessings god did not call us for that everything he gave us is so that we can shine light we can do what shine light it is easy if i my money affects your life my money was given to me by god i pray on my money when i sow seed into the life of someone that will never meet me i can bet you that person will know jesus I am telling you the truth. 70% at least will know Jesus. There are things you can send on assignment for God. It's just about seed. So long the seed is from you. And everything about you will be fruitful. It's a form of thanksgiving. I used to, I used to love the Anglican church. Those, you know I'm saying, especially those in the village. I used to go to the village a lot in the eastern part of Nigeria. You need to see them when they are having their thanksgiving. Those women don't have money. The best of the best of their yams. The best of the best of the ugu they brought from their farm. The best, I mean, when I say the best of the best, and they will now put it together, they will now send it to poor people that will never be able to say thank you to them. Guess what? How God paid them. They never went to school. God made sure that their children become stars. It is a principle of scripture. Don't wait till the house is finished. At what point should you bust out in celebration? Foundation. The, the, the centurion said, Sir, I, I'm not come to my house. I'm a terrible sinner. Don't bother. You just say the word. My daughter will be healed. Jesus stood her back. I've never seen such. Even my disciples, they don't know me this much. 
I've never seen such great faith. If, you, if we have an, a revelation of who God is, the fact that he said what he said at all is enough to dance. Abraham, there is a there is a brother. He very strange guy. He got this revelation very early. Very strange guy. I learned this from him. I must tell you the truth. Anytime God gives him a word, it's like the 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 earth has ended as far as it's concerned it doesn't have to be a prophetic word from a man of god it could just be the fact that while he was listening to his sermon one scripture stuck to him and did not leave him those are the ways god speaks oh he goes to town goes to town but then god loves it god jesus told thomas he said because you see you believe blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe celebrate the promise not the performance from the foundation start blasting on start blasting on the truth is this if if Solomon has started celebrating at the time David said, when David was still young, at the time David said, you'll be king, the whole of Israel will have known who will be the next king. Whole of Israel will have known. Oh, but pastor, isn't that, isn't that uh, premature exposure? Exposure of what? Exposure of God. Are you the one that said, it's God. The only is on him to perform. And for him to say a thing and it won't come to pass, he is no longer God. Praise the Lord. Finally, don't compare God's working in your life with that of another person. Listen, people. There were two categories of people in the passage we read. Category one. I won't get down. <laughs> Category one. Those that saw the former temple, which was the temple of Solomon. Beautiful. Awesome. Everything was laid with gold and overlaid with gold. Category two. Those are the ones 20 years and above, according to that scripture. They were not there when Solomon's temple. They only had the history. Those days there was no photograph. <laughs> so nobody could see what the temple looked like. As far as they were concerned. A temple is being built those ones were shouting for joy the old men that saw the former temple they were crying so which means there are two categories in the house this morning those that that would tend to cry because they are comparing what god is doing in their life with what god is doing in someone else's life yeah uh, but you know there was a mystery in this the bible says and god said when the people refused this second temple was took them 46 years to build 46 there was in fact the foundation took two years this foundation that they were celebrating took two years to build the temple for that took another 17 years to <laughs> completion took 46 years now when the people were reluctant to build the bible says god raised hey guy god raised zachariah they began to prophesy hey guy two chapter chapter two verse nine hey guy told them at one point from verse eight he says god says silver is mine gold. this one doesn't have gold but god said no i don't need that silver is mine gold is mine he now said in verse nine the glory of the latter house i pray you end this year better than you started it the glory of your latter house shall be greater. In other words, this temple that is not looking beautiful, no gold, no silver, 
nothing at all just wood and earth in fact the truth is there were five things in the former temple that were not in the new one the ark of the covenant was not there nebuchadnezzar had burnt it the shekinah glory was no longer there the urim and the tumin the coin they used for direction was no longer there spirit of prophecy pff, had gone away fire there was no longer fire on the altar god was now saying the glory of this seemingly innocuous house will be greater than that of solomon i didn't understand that until one day when i was reading through scriptures i now understood god was living on the ark in solomon's temple this was the only temple that god himself walked in as a man and all the glory that solomon's temple had that was present but people could not see god this was the only temple where people saw god with their eyes jesus said today this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes ladies and gentlemen it might not come in the same way the other persons has come it will come in the uniqueness of god's purpose for your life let's stand to pray You know, it's, it's amazing. It takes a revelation for you to thank God for your pain. It takes a revelation to thank God for your pain. It takes a revelation to Can we just thank God for his mercy this morning? Thank God again for his mercy.
Christ in your name. Okay, can we just thank the Lord for two minutes on our knees and just be grateful? Whatever comes to your heart to say to Him, just go ahead and say, No, you guys, sit, 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 don't listen, sit, sit, sit. We are playing. We will rise in your name. not be thanking God, just minister to God. Just instrumentally play. You reign on high Oh, come on, minister to him. Thank him. Open up your heart. The Bible says he returned. One of the ten returned. When you are grateful for the foundation, you are enforcing prophecy. You are committing God's hand. We will rise in your name. Adonai. Ishe Radera. We will rise. We will rise. We will kneel. We will rise. Adonai. To forgive you for complaining go ahead and tell him lord forgive my complaints i didn't know better lord hallelujah amen there's a lady here your your marriage has been a problem you have been praying, 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 praying and complaining to God. God says to tell you, have you ever thanked me that you are even married in the first place? Switch. Don't pray again. Just thank God. That terrible man, you see, you see the best of men you have ever seen. Just switch. No more complaints. Lord, I thank you for my husband. Thank you for my relationship. Thank you for my marriage. Thank you because we are happy. 
call the things that be not as though they were thank you blessed be your name Jesus forgive our complaints oh God forgive our complaints oh God forgive our complaints oh God Lord we are grateful give us a heart of gratitude eternal one do what only you can do help us be grateful in Jesus mighty name amen can we stand to our feet please Now listen, something has started in your life. No, no, I'm not prophesying. I'm just saying as is a, is, is, is a statement. Or right, let, let me put it this way. If, especially if it's a project, thank you, Jesus. You started a project. And it's like it's not gone further than where it is. I, I need this myself. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I need it seriously and I'm so excited that the Lord is telling us this this morning we are now going to thank God for where it is that you now see what they call uncommon speed you have you started it and it's just not left where amen it has not left where it is whatever project it is it could be academical it could be career it could be a building any project that you started and it's not it's just not gone far almost like it's foundational stage now you are going to dance like it is what now the truth is this let me rephrase you are going to dance because it is completed Amen. put on the screen Philippians 1 6 thank you Jesus my time I, I just left my time now Philippians 1 6 can we read together Is it something we think we know? What the Bible says, being what? Confident. That he who have begun. So only those that have projects. Alright? We're just going to do that for no music. No nothing. You will dance your own dance. Let people think you are mad. They will come and see you testify soon. What are we doing? dancing because the project is completed completed the last time the Lord told me to do this I was in Global Harvest Church their convention in Ibado um, Victor Adeyemi and there was this man that had they've been trying to build a bungalow bungalow for almost six years bungalow <laughs> And you know, this brother took it to another level. Not only did he dance, he gave the bungalow to God. He gave, he gave it to the church. Said this. Um, last year I was in Ibadan. 20, yeah, 2016 I was in Ibadan. And I was speaking in the conference for my wife. And the, 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 his wife was there. They just moved into their um, duplex. Finished house duplex on a better land in a GRA the bungalow was not in a GRA they now moved and built she was there I didn't even know she was there she came and testified and said they just moved into that house yesterday she, he took it to another level God loves such people when God asks you for one when you go to you are telling God 
I am serious. I don't want one portion. It's double portion. Alright? So there will be no music. Only those that have projects. Alright? Only those that have projects. There will be a noise. There was a noise of joy. And there was a noise of weeping. weeping. But there is no noise of weeping in this house. The only way you cannot weep is don't compare yesterday's glory with today's glory. It might not come, it might not glitter like gold and silver. It doesn't mean God is not there. Then number two, don't compare God's working in your life with that of somebody else. His purpose for you is different. Hallelujah. Because the project is completed. We are the foundation. We are celebrating completion because we know God does not start what he will not finish go ahead and just celebrate it no music no nothing just your own celebration your own way You now have the revelation. You now have the revelation. The devil has stopped it because he blinded us. But now we have the revelation. God will not start. Zerubbabel, your hand has started this work. Zerubbabel, your hand will finish it. The healing will be complete. The project will be finished. Thank you.
Every eye shut, please. You are here, you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Or you are backslidden, you know you've gone way off. And you want to return to your maker this morning. I'm going to count three. On three, I need you to shoot up your right hand. I want to pray with you. And help you come back home. Your life is a waste outside of Jesus, I tell you. The devil is just baiting you. And keeping you, trying to keep you there out of God until the day he destroys you. At that time, it might become too late. Some die, never have the opportunity to come back. So you are here, you don't have Jesus in your heart and you want to give. Surrender your heart to him this morning. Because he loves you so much. What you see us celebrating is nothing but of God's mercies. Uh, no, nobody here is who he or she ought to be. We are what we are because of Jesus. And he wants to make you what you can be. He wants to make you what your effort can get you. He wants to forgive your sins and give you eternal life. You want to give your heart to Jesus on three. I need you to shoot up your right hand. And I'll pray for you where you are. One. Two. Three. Raise that hand. God bless you. Those of you that have your hands raised up, just say in your heart with me. Heavenly Father. I come sorry for all my sins before you. I accept your forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. I receive the mercy that comes through Christ Jesus. He becomes my Lord and Savior from today. I renounce sin and I make Jesus the Lord of my life. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Please keep that hand up until somebody slips something into your hand. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, thank you for these wonderful ones. Today they've made you Lord. Thank you because today you are Lord. You sit and throne upon their life. I break the power of sin over their life. I say, Lord, they have no portion in darkness anymore. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, because you fill them with your person. And give them the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And let them, God Almighty, be mighty battle axes in your hand. Use them for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for everyone now. Please, your eyes shut still. Those that had your hands up, please keep that hand up until somebody slips something to your hands. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for, we've made you a liar, Lord. We've made you a liar. Lord, you started something and we have agreed with the devil that you can't finish it. Worry took over us. We believe the lies of the devil. We followed what we saw, not what you said. But Father, we thank you for forgiving us this morning. And Father, thank you for the dedication of the house. For the completion of school. Thank you for the completion of that professional exams. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for finishing what you have started. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay. As we could we just project the announcements, please? And uh, in the meantime, if you could just um, put your offerings together. Just package your offerings and um, in the interest of time, if um, the ushers could just get ready and listen to the announcements. Hello everyone, my name is Leia. Just a couple of announcements. Every Sunday we meet for two services, one at 9 a.m. and the other service at 11 a.m. Um, every first Sunday of the month we meet for Thanksgiving Sunday, which happens at Mongolia Hall. Um, if you have any questions, please ask the ushers. 
And every Tuesday we have our Bible study. Yeah. So our Bible study, we dig deep into the word, um, discuss the word, we ask questions, and um, if you have any questions, you should definitely come for Bible study. This month, the month of September, we're going to be discussing relationships. So whether it, whether it be a relationship with your friends, relationship with God, which is the most important, um, relationship with your colleagues, relationship with your spouse and your kids. Um, so please, please, please come for Bible study this month. It's going to be awesome. Um, so every last Friday of the month, we have our Holy Ghost service, which starts at 9 p.m. You don't want to miss that. It's a time when we pray and uh, we talk about the world also. Uh, let's not forget, every second and first Sunday of the month, we meet our Connect group. Same thing with your adults. Um, if you have any question, you can ask the ushers for what area you fall into, and then they will help you with that. Now, stay tuned for the rest of this announcement. Hmm. Enforcing Prophecy Week. I just got that text message. Did you get that text message from church about Enforcing Prophecy Week? If you're not getting text messages from church and you're not receiving our emails, then what I advise you to do is go to the church admin office and provide them your updated email or updated phone number so you can receive updates on what church is doing. You can also text this number right here. And if you text this number, then church will have your contact information and they'll be able to send you updates. Also for our new members or individuals that haven't signed up our membership forms, you can go to the church office and sign a membership form so you receive our information as well as we have your birthday so we can celebrate you. You can also contact one of the beautiful ushers right beside you and tell them that you just want a membership form. Then you can collect that, fill it out and we'll be able to send you updates as well as uh, congratulate you and celebrate you on um, those special events. All right, thank you so much. God bless. Having a teenager can be challenging. That's why House of Praise has actually developed a monthly teleconference meeting where parents of teenagers can discuss as well as pray for their teens. It happens on the last Wednesday of every month and it's from 8.30 to 9 p.m. The next one is actually on October 25th and you just have to dial in to this number. So if you're a parent of a teenager, you need to be there. Call in. Take care. House of Praise. So, evangelism team is looking, actively searching for writers. If you know you can sit down for hours, if they paid you to write, you will say, no, I don't want the money. I just want to write. You're the person we're looking for. So, if you're interested, please contact this email here and they will get back to you. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, um, sometimes as a man, you need to hang out with other men and also just share with them. We all love our ladies, but sometimes it's good to be with other men and just discuss and um, fellowship with one another. That's why the Men of Valor group is hosting a program, program titled Man Up. It's from October 13th to October 14th, where men can discuss their issues and see things from other men's perspective. So make sure you're there. Registration is only $25 and it's at the beautiful Hilton, so I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be there. So plan your trip, pack your bags, and head to Edmonton on October 13th to October 14th. See you there. What's up, Pastor Praise? It's Shader here. Just want to let you know that there's a teleconference crossover prayer at 11.30 p.m. every last day of the month. And there's a daily prayer at 6 o'clock to 6.30 a.m. on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So you should call in. Uh, it's a bit yeah. You are still struggling with Gilly since morning. I'm still struggling with it. When I've been ready since morning. But your fila is like 15 seconds. Like 15 seconds for where? Do you know how much work it takes to put in on a fila like this? It's a big deal. Anyway, hurry up. Do you have anything to tell anybody about International Sunday? Okay. So, International Sunday. I think the time is 11 a.m. It's 11 a.m. Is there African time? Uh, see. It's There's no African time, bro. You can wear your African wear, but please, no African time. So when it comes to time, we are Canadian, but please come in your cultural outfit and make sure you put, have enough time to wear any headgear or any cultural outfit that you are going with so that you are not late for the program. Honestly, I know this is an announcement, but it's, it took me forever to actually spread this daily. I can't lie. It's a lot of work. I salute all the people men that actually tie this thing every Sunday. <laughs> Is a ministry on his own. So, anyway, we will see you there on International there Sunday, on 11 a.m. 11 a.m. at Magnolia Hall. Please come ready. Come to here. Okay, 
Jesus could hit us, collect the tithe and offering. As we prepare to give and send our tithe and offering on a mission. Hallelujah. As you gave it seed to the Lord. Um, Ushers, could you just pick up the offering, please? Well, well, yeah. well choir. Can we all rise? Father, we just want to thank you for the offering of your people. We thank you, Father, for having given us the power to get wealth. And even as your people have given, Father, with their whole heart, we pray, Lord, that you will use this offering, Lord, to deplete the kingdom of darkness and to replenish, Father, your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for the covenant that you have with your people. It's an everlasting covenant. And even as we send this seed, Father, into the future that generations father following will benefit father by the giving of your people we thank you father for all that you alone can do and we give you the praise and the glory and everybody says Amen. hallelujah Amen. praise the lord be seated very briefly we can we'll close the first service right away Amen. Very quick. How many of us are blessed this morning? That blessing will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. 
on Sunday, I know that we have announced that it's going to be 11 o'clock. It's 10. By 10, we are all seated. All. We are all seated in Monolia Hall. Are we, are, we with, are we together? We want 10 so that we will not be too late. And we want to be seated before the major comes. So please... I want all of us to be there by 10. The workers will be there earlier, as usual. Workers will be there by 10, uh, by 9.30. The Lord will increase us and give you more strength in Jesus' name. All nation, one God. We have heard what happened this, the first, during the first service. There was going to be a continuation of that. It's going to be a continuation of that next Sunday. Amen. If today is your first time of fellowshipping with us on a Sunday service like this, can I quickly see your hand, please? Don't be distracted, please. I don't want people dis being distracted. Today is your first time of fellowshipping with us on a first... On a, on a Sunday, today, you know, on a first service... Oh, there is no one. We didn't invite anyone. That was not too good. Oh, thank you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. I highly welcome. We love you. We celebrate you. Is there any other person? Please come forward. I want to pray with you. You are so special before us. We love you and we celebrate you. We celebrate your God's faithfulness in your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Is there any other person? Oh, God. You're welcome to church. You're highly welcome. We love you. We celebrate Jesus in your life. This is house of praise. And this is where God is doing great and mighty things. Um, this is where we go together. We grow together. We came together and we glow together. And in paraventure, you do not have any uh, believing church um, that is giving you the right thing that you need to grow. I believe sincerely, uh, by God's grace, we will grow together in this place. And together we will make it to the finishing line in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Our blessed Redeemer, thank you for bringing your son to your house. Father, today we speak into his life and declare, O oh God, he will know you. Your counsel will be established in, in his life. If paraventure he has not had an encounter with you, we pray. In a little while, we'll have an encounter that will change every aspect of his life in the name of Jesus. Do something that you, he has never experienced in his life. That he will be convinced that he came to your house. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please, have you seen that our sister? Can they follow her? Amen. Let's be on our feet as we bring the first service to a close and then so we can start second service right away. You know one thing I desire for you? All that the Lord has done in your life this week will mark a new beginning for you. As you are setting out into this week, the God of heaven, I command that doors of favor will be open on their own accord for you. When Samuel anointed David, he went out from the realm of that anointing. He was never the same. And I speak to your destiny. After that the Lord has done in your life this weekend, you will never remain the same again. Holy Spirit, we appreciate you, Jesus. Have your way in our lives. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' awesome name, we pray. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall.